Let's take a look at writing absolute value equations. <clears throat> so in these first examples, we're given the transformation and we want to write the equation in the form y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Okay, so for the first example, it says it reflects over the x-axis and it translates down 6. So we're going to write in the form that they've given us. And when it reflects over the x-axis, that means a is negative. And then it translates down 6. So we just need to put a minus 6 behind the absolute value symbol. For the second example, it says that it shifted right 2 and up 4. So we have nothing special to put for a. Right 2 would be x minus 2 in the grouping symbol, which is our absolute value symbol. And then up 4 means to add 4 for the k. In the third example, it says it translates left 3 and is vertically compressed by a factor of 1 third. So the factor of 1 third is our a value because that's where it would vertically compress. And then it shifted left 3, so we need to put x plus 3 inside the absolute value symbol. And that's it for those three. Let's look at a few more that are giving you the vertex. So for the first one, it gives you the vertex of negative 3, 2. Any vertex you're given is in the form of h and then k. So that's what we're going to fill into that formula. So we would just write y equals the absolute value of x minus h. So minus negative 3 and then plus k, which is 2. But then let's just clean that up a little bit and say minus negative 3 would turn into x plus 3. And then bring down the rest. And that's it. For the next example, it gives us a vertex at 5, negative 4. So that's our h and our k. So we would write y equals. We're not given anything for a, so let's just put x minus h, which is 5, plus k, which is negative 4. And then the third one gave us a 0 for h and a 2 for k. So we would just put y equals x. Nothing goes with x since h is 0. And then k goes out back as positive 2. So that's it for the ones given just the vertex. Now we have three more examples that are given the graph, but they also want us to identify intervals of increasing and decreasing. So first let's focus on writing the equation. So I'm going to pick out the vertex for this first graph. It's located at 3, negative 2, and then the a value is important for our equation. So I noticed that the a like looking from the vertex to the next point on my V, it goes up to right 1. So A would equal positive 2. The graph opens up. So that gives us enough information to write the equation. So Y would equal 2, the absolute value of X minus H. Remember, H is the first number in our vertex. So X minus 3 plus K, which is negative 2. And that is it for the first one. In the next graph, our vertex is located at 1, 3. And then the slope of our graph looks like it's a negative 1. So A would equal negative 1 in this case. And then our equation, we can go ahead and set up, would equal negative. You don't have to write the 1 for the A, but you can if you would like. And then we have H is 1 k is 3. So let's do x minus h, which is 1, and then plus 3. And we have one more graph, so let's take a look at the vertex again. It's located this time at 2, 0. We need our slope. Looks like our slope is a positive 1, so a just equals 1. And let's write the equation. So y would equal 1, but we don't really have to write that. And then x minus h. Remember, h is the first number in the vertex, and k is the second number. So x minus 2 in absolute value, and then plus 0, but we don't really have to write plus 0. So let's just leave it like that. And in the next part of the problem, it says to identify intervals of increasing and decreasing. So what I'm going to do is erase the work we have from writing the equation 
to show you intervals of increase and decrease. Okay, so in the first graph, I can tell that from left to right, it's first increasing. It's going down, like from left to right. Like if I were walking along, and I were to start to go along this graph, the way that it flows, it would be, it would be, did I put increase? Oh my goodness, that is decreasing. Whew. decreasing because if I'm walking along I'd be going downhill first and then after it gets to three it starts to go uphill and I would be walking uphill on this part of the graph in the next graph if I'm walking along and I start to walk up the hill it is increasing first and then decreasing and I want to stick with my color scheme. So let me actually change that because this one's reversed. This one is increasing first, which I've been, I was putting in red. And then it was decreasing, which was purple. So let's keep it that way. And in my last graph, it is as if I was walking along again, I would be decreasing first. So let's keep that purple. And then after I get to two, I would be increasing, going uphill. So let's just talk briefly about how to write these intervals. In the first graph, let's go back over here. This first interval that was decreasing starts at negative infinity because it just points over here to the left infinitely. So let's put negative infinity and it stops at three and starts to increase. So we got to put three is where it stops decreasing. So let's put decreasing. That's our interval. And then increasing. We write similarly, but it starts at three. So let's put a bracket at three since that would be equal to three. And then it goes to infinity because it points infinitely to the right side of the graph. And now let's look at the next one. The second graph was increasing first, so let's put that interval. It goes from negative infinity, since it's pointing to the left, up to 1. So let's put negative infinity. We put a parentheses because nothing's ever going to equal infinity or negative infinity. And then it goes up to 1, and we put a bracket because it would equal 1. Brackets go with things that are equal. And decreasing starts at 1, so we put a bracket and goes to infinity because it points infinitely to the right. And in our final graph, we had it decreasing first. So let's put that goes from negative infinity up to the two right there. And put a bracket at the two. And then it was increasing from, whoop, I need a bracket because it would be equal to two. And then it goes to infinity because it points infinitely to the right. All right, so there's just one more example we need to look at for today's notes. It says, while playing pool, you try to shoot the eight ball into the corner pocket as shown. Imagine that a coordinate plane is placed over the pool table. The eight ball is at five five fourths and the pocket you are aiming for is at ten five. So you can tell we're aiming for this pocket over here and they're saying that's at 10 5 and the eight ball is at that's the eight ball right there is at five five fourths and you are going to bank the ball off of the side at six zero so that's our vertex is the six zero let me make that another color all right, so it says write an equation for the path of the ball and do you make your shot? So the first thing we could do is start writing the equation the way we did on the previous examples and use our vertex. We have H and K, and then this extra point that we know is on the line is going to help us to find our A value. So I'm going to write Y equals A and then put 
the H and the K in as we've done before. So X minus H would be X minus 6. Absolute value. And then plus 0, we don't really need to write. So this extra point 5, 5 fourths was given to us because we need to plug in the X and the Y to help us figure out our A value. Because we're not given any other information. So I'm going to plug in the 5 is my X. And the Y is 5 fourths. And then everything else would stay the same and we can solve that equation for A now. So I've plugged them in. Let's just start simplifying. So 5 minus 6 would be the absolute value of negative 1. Bring down the 5 fourths. The absolute value of negative 1 is just 1. So A would actually equal... 5 fourths. And so what we can do is take that and plug it into our equation up here and have a better equation of what our path of our ball would be. So 5 fourths, the absolute value of x minus 6. So we could do one of two things to answer part B. That is the answer to part A. It says, do you make your shot? So in other words, does this pass through the point 10, 5? Because that's where we would actually let me grab a bright color. That's where the ball would actually go into the pocket and we would make the shot. So let's plug it in and just see. So if x is 10 and y is 5, would this be equal? And so we plug them in to what we have now as our equation. So 5 fourths, the absolute value of 10 minus 6. So I'm going to erase this arrow just to give myself some more room. And write 10 minus 6, just a little bit better. All right, so let's just clean that up. So 5 is equal to 5 fourths times the absolute value of 10 minus 6. 10 minus 6 would give us 4. So is 5 equal to 5 fourths times 4? And that's like 4 over 1. So you end up with 5 is equal to 20 divided by 4 which is true. Or you could think of the fours would cancel out and they would be equal that way. So we would say yes to part B, we did make our shot. And then the answer to part A was way over here in our work. And that is it.